This is the plaintiff, James Rhodes. He says his wife's friend is the defendant, and the woman bought some furniture from him and hasn't paid for it in full yet. He thought he could trust the woman to pay over time, but he was wrong, and is suing her here, and now, in this court, for the $1,300 he still owed. This is the defendant, Zena Davis. She says she bought a bed from the plaintiff, and when she got it home, the mattress was covered in urine stains. The guy was moving to another state and asked her if she wanted anything else, so she took a few items. Now he's trying to charge her after the fact? Come on! She's accused of a used furniture fiasco. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that he loaned his wife's friend money to buy some furniture, and guess what? He says he got stiffed. But the defendant says the mattress she bought from him was covered in urine, and she's not paying him in full for it because she was hoodwinked. It's the case of you're in big trouble now. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Rhodes, tell me what happened with Ms. Davis and this furniture sale. We agreed uh, right after I came out of the hospital for the sale of a Queen Anne's bed, a mattress, a box frame. Uh, she also got a whole chest and a wall Okay, but let's, let's back it up a bit. How is it that you know her? Uh, through my wife. They, they were practicing the same religion, so that's why I figured I could trust her. Okay. But it seems that that's not the case. It turned out to hmm. be a lot different than what I expected. Okay. But so what was the first discussion anybody had about buying furniture from you? Well, initially she was going to buy my wife's china cabinet for $500. But when she saw what I had to offer, she changed her mind and backed out of that deal and decided to uh, get the stuff that I was offering. Okay. But how did she find out what you were offering? I mentioned it to her. Okay. So then when does she first see it? And what is it you guys agreed to first? Well, uh, when she first saw it, it was, it was in my storage facility. Right. And uh, that's, that's when she saw everything. Right. But so what, do, what is the first agreement that is reached that when she goes there, she's supposed to be buying what? Uh, the, the bed, I offered her the, the mattress and the box screen to go with her, a whole chest and a wall unit. And how much was she supposed to be paying for that? $1,500. And does she pay you the $1,500? No, she only gave me 200 Okay, but why are you selling it to her if she doesn't have the money? Why are you doing this payment plan thing with used furniture? This well, never goes well. We have a name for people like you. We call them litigants. I figured since she was uh, in the same religion as my wife. What religion is this that we just trust them without any other further ado? What religion is this? Uh, she's, a, she's a Buddhist. Okay, so according to you, the agreement is 1500 for the items we just said. And then did she take other items as well? No, she just took the bed the mattress, the box screen, a whole chest, a small uh, computer table unit, and uh, a wall unit. Is there anybody else present when the two of you make these decisions? No, just between me and her. Okay. Ms. Davis, what is your version about what you agreed to buy? I remember when I was at his house and I was purchasing the comfort set and um, other items from his wife. She was telling me about the bed. I mean, he had a bed. And I had said I was going to buy the bed. And one day I was at, we had talked about it at my house, I mean, at his house. So we, I had left their home and went to the UPS store. I seen him. And we was also discussing the price of the bed. The bed, he stated, would be, he asked me that day, he said, well, hey, why won't you go online and find out, find out how much the bed costs? I told him, no, that is your bed. You go online and you find out and you tell me. He stated to me, I will sell the bed half price of what you find it online. Him or his wife That's found a they picture stating how much it was. They told me I agreed to um, to pay. The to amount. pay what? That's exactly what I'm trying to figure out. What did you agree to pay? They found the bed for $1,500, okay. okay? And it was half of that, and I, it was supposed to be like $750. That's half, okay? When I got there, I brought my friend with me. First of all, his wife had contacted me through text message asking me to come over there and help them move the stuff around in their furniture, in their storage. We got over to get the bed. I never asked for the bed because I knew I did not have the money, Your Honor. So, so what were you doing in the storage room? Ma'am, 
What were you doing in the storage room if you weren't there to buy furniture? They asked me to come over there and get the bed. They sent a text. Well, then why don't you say, no, I don't have the money. I don't understand. That's why, like, no one can make me buy a bed I don't need or want. I don't get it. I'm yeah. just trying to understand what was in your head. What did you agree to? In my head, $750. So then you I get did. to the storage room and what happens? Mm -hmm. We get to the storage room and he wanted my friend to move other stuff around so he can get to other items that was often in his storage building. So when we got there, he was like, you can have this, you can have that, you can have this. That, now, that is what, was, what happened on that day. Wait, so what else did you get? He was taking out stuff. It was like a the bed, the mattress, the... Um, oh, the hope chest, unit. the wall unit, and the computer table? And a, and a table. Okay. And according to you, all that was free? I didn't say that it was free. Well, how much was it? He didn't put a price tag on it. So why so did you take it, it if you don't know how much it costs? Because he's disagreeing with you. He says you were very clear on how much it costs. You're just trying to snake out of paying it. And the normal transaction between two people is, you want to buy this? How much? This much. Sounds that good. That's how that, that normally day. works. So I'm not understanding how you take all this furniture and you know you're supposed to pay uh -huh. something, but nobody ever discusses how much it is. That doesn't make any sense to me. The reason why it's not making sense is because on that day in that storage building, he never said he was going to charge me for all those other items. And as a matter of fact, he was trying to say that he was going to, I guess, give the furniture, and I'm saying I guess, give the furniture to me, I guess. I didn't want it. I next for it. It's in my house, set up there with no place to go. I, why so did you? I'm like sorry. I I, you're not. You have to understand that you're not making any sense to me because nobody goes through uh. the trouble of getting a friend, getting a truck, and picking up furniture that they didn't want and they thought was free. But there's an agree. But you paid two hundred dollars. You know, not about I'm not buying the other it. furniture, Your Honor. Mr. Rose, do you have anything in writing that furniture. tells us how much the agreement was? Are there any no. texts? Are there any emails? No, just just verbal, because uh, yeah, I fear that's... she can be trusted. Oh, uh, can and, you please uh, stop told... saying that? All right? You All didn't right, know her from a hole in the wall. That. I don't care what, what religion. Everybody's some religion. Well, not necessarily. Well, I guess if, if you think of atheism as a, as a credo, everybody believes in something. That doesn't make them honest, okay? So explain to me why it is that you don't have anything in writing, even if it's so much as a text, because I know you two know how to text because you text right. each other. So I, wh right. how is there no text about the total amount and the agreement? It's so easy. You don't even need a lawyer. You don't need a piece of paper. You don't need a crayon. You just need your phone. And then before there's a problem, we'd have everything hammered out, right? Okay, right. so now tell me what happens. Let's see the text you do have and where we end up there. Do you have a phone, Mr. Rhodes? Yes. Do you text on it? Yes. Did Most you have any conversations? You gave us no texts. And that's weird in a case like this. So I'm curious, in your phone, are you sure that there's never a time when you text with her about what the price is? No, I, I do it just verbal. You know, You're positive. You looked to, in your phone. Right. She agreed $1,500. And uh, when we were discussing it, she said she was going to pay every two weeks. How much did you pay him, Mr. Ms. Davis? I, I thought in the beginning it was 300 But he said two, and I'm okay with that. Well, how do you not know how much you paid? Don't you have a receipt? Mm. Okay. Um, I see some texts in October. By the way, when was the transfer of the furniture? End of August. Okay, so I see on October 30th, she says, stop all that damn lying. I am bringing all your blank back. I am not a charity case. Right. You asked me to come get this stuff. Just also, nobody it. had my old address. God protect fools and babies. And from time to time, I am a little of both. I will text you when we bring you crap back to you. So you didn't want the furniture back, obviously. You wanted the rest of your money. Right. So did you ever, so was there some time when you set a meeting place where she, for her to pay you the money or something? Well, I kept texting her. I kept calling, but uh, she never answered my text. If you kept texting her and she wasn't answering, what was it you were texting her? I was trying to get a response of, of when, when uh, she would pay. Exactly. Did you ever was, mention uh, the amount? No, I didn't mention the, the All right. Balance. And no, would she ever respond to you? No. All right. So then what happens? I, did, I, try, I tried to find out where she lived so I could know, go by and talk to her. Uh, but I found out that the phone number she gave wasn't her phone number. It was a boyfriend's phone number. 
and I find out her phone number I didn't have a mailbox set up. And I, when I did get a hold of her once where she talked to me, she told me that she monitored her phone call so she uh, can decide who she wanted to talk to. So each time I called on the phone, there was no answer because the one, the one phone that she gave me that was her boyfriend's phone number, the mailbox was always full, so I couldn't leave a message. Okay. So, so I uh, texted him once. And? Because I found out it was his phone number uh, to ask him to ask her to contact me, but uh, I never got a response back from him from my text. So then you filed suit. Yes. Uh, the, the one thing she mentioned in the beginning about the bed being, uh, mattress being peed, which is a lie, because the only person that slept on it is me, unless I peed in the bed, which I don't, uh, it wasn't, that wasn't true. She made that up. I don't know where she got it from, but uh, it was a lie. <sighs> it was an outright lie. So, so I guess. I think I stopped peeing in the bed when I was a Well, I guess infant. she's referring to the stain that is yeah. in this picture. And uh, so she's assuming. I don't know where those stains come from, but those stains weren't there when uh, I gave okay. it a bed. Ms. Davis, you have all this furniture. You've paid $200. And how is it that I should rule in your favor and just say you owe nothing? Your Honor, I'm not asking you to rule in my favor to say that I owe nothing. I just want to say that I, at the time that me and him had that transaction, I was working. I had just got a job. I was working, and I had people that was getting fired, and I was working by myself, and I was telling him that. So I did not have the time to come over there and to even pay him another dime. Now, what I seen and this is just verbally me speaking. What I've seen is if he wanted his money so badly, he could have drove down to Minden as well as he wanted me to drive to Shreveport, Bolger. He never suggested that, okay? He said, yes, it's very true. Him, his wife and I are, um, what well, were, um, organization members, okay? And he did know me through that. Um, I'm never saying that I don't owe him the money. Which I even said to him, if you would give me time, the time is what he didn't give me. Every day I got off from work at 6, 7 o'clock, exhausted and driving back home. I did not feel like driving to Bozier. So I told him that verbally. Why don't you just send a check? That was not good enough for you him. Can, but you can just mail a check or do a cash app. There's other ways to pay. You don't have to drive. Why, why would driving be the... the None of this was suggested. And at what's the time, suggested? I'm You're a grown you, woman. You know what's like, out there. He doesn't have to suggest. I don't get it. Like... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do See, cash See, this is yet. why you do... I, I understand, but, you know, just like, just like my husband, I don't do that. Well, no, now you're going to, someday, the day's going to come when you're going to have to do it, pal. You know, like this, you know, that's part, or, or if you don't like technology, then you do something called a check and you put something called a stamp on something called an envelope, there, your Pony Express. I mean, there are a million ways to pay someone when you want to pay someone. You know, and I this is why, Mr. Address, Rhodes, either. you do not sell a used item to anyone, anyone on a consignment plan. There are things I want you to understand, Mr. Rhodes, that you should learn through this case. Number one, yes. things should be in writing. Even if that writing is just a text or an email, things should be in writing, okay? Right. That's what the telephone is for, creating a record, all right? Not just taking pictures of food or pictures of kids or pictures of sceneries, it's creating a record. Number two, if someone can't afford the furniture, don't you know, you need to be you need to be prepared to go through this kind of hassle to get the money, because well, if, she never told. Oh come on, she, she only had two hundred dollars on her, and you were giving her the furniture. Most people would say, "Let me know when you have the 15. That's how people sell furniture. When you've got the fifteen, right. we'll talk. But you wanted to get rid of it, so you were happy to do that, okay? But you got lucky because in this trial, she said, "I'm not saying I don't know the money. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying he was harassing me and just too on. You know, he wouldn't give me a chance to pay. So you got lucky in this trial." Because if I if if I if you had another judge who believed her, or if she had said something different and said I was supposed to pay two hundred dollars for everything and I've already paid it, how were you going to prove differently? You know, I could. All, right, it was all verbal. Right, yes, yes, it was all verbal. Which is not to say that verbal agreements are not enforceable. It's to say they're harder to prove. That's all.
Right. They're harder to prove. But she said, look, I'm, I'm not saying I don't know the money. Uh, I thought it, he, the bed was just saying, I thought he was giving me the other stuff, but even she has backpedaled on that during the testimony. I'm finding in favor of the plaintiff and the amount of the remaining $1,300. Verdict for the plaintiff. So the plaintiff, Mr. Rhodes, gets exactly what he was suing for here in the People's Court, the full $1,300. Uh, Ms. Davis, let me ask you a quick question here. The judge says you got to pay him. Uh, you owe him the $1,500. you have already given him two, so you owe him $1,300. What have you learned from Oh, this? I don't mind. I mean, I never said I didn't owe any money. It's just like a lot of stuff I did not want, and he knows it. So I'm okay with whatever. I'm well, glad it's over. <laughs> it's all right, it is over, and you, um, so, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you lost. All right, Mr. Rhodes, okay. <laughs> I imagine you've learned something from this case, too. You, you've learned what a telephone is for. It's for writing. That's what the judge says, right? Right, right. And, and keeping records. And uh, like I said, the biggest issue is that when I tried to text her to uh, discuss the issue, she would never reply to the text. So it's kind of hard for me to get anything uh, after we had made the verbal agreement in text yeah. when she wouldn't respond to the text. The bottom line is you've learned a lot, I'm sure, from this. If you sell anything again, you know, don't trust somebody to pay on time if you don't have it in writing, right? That's the bottom right. line, okay? All right, Harvey, what do you think? Doug, this is essentially an enforceable oral contract. And a lot of people wonder about this. People think, uh-uh, contract isn't legal unless it's in writing. There are a few contracts, like real estate contracts, that do have to be in writing, but a lot of contracts don't. So then the question, well, why not just do oral contracts rather than written? It's easier. The problem is it's harder to prove what was said. So you go to court, you say one thing, the other person says something else. And if you have the burden of proof, you lose the case. If you have a piece of paper in hand, guess what? You win. Marilyn, I've heard you comment several times on After the Verdict about being annoyed with being at a restaurant and someone has a mask on and then pulls it down when they come up to you. Do you call them out for it? And if so, what do you say? I know that at the beginning of- You're so timid, I can't see you calling somebody <laughs> out. Or something like that. You'd say, you'd let me do it. <laughs> when, when COVID first happened, I actually had the restaurant tour, the owner of the restaurant. Do you remember that? Where yes. He, he goes, blah, 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 blah. He's right on top of me. And he right. pulls his mask down. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and he said, oh, I just, we can't hear through these things. I go, that's right. the point is that right. you're supposed to keep it on when you're coming close. I remember the restaurant. It was in Miami. Uh, yeah. Um, I was in um, a bakery with you in North Carolina, and I'd left a mask in the car. You're supposed to have a mask on in there. And I'm in line with no mask, thinking, ah, oh, maybe I can do a quick hit here and get in and out. And two guys come in behind me, and they're like, dude, where's your mask? Put your mask on, right? Right. And I, I, I was so, uh, just irked me the way they said it, right? Which, uh, so, they were right. Yeah, I know. So I mouthed off to them. What did you say? I, know, I can't remember. But I went oh, out to I the car. Oh, I kind of remember this. I went out to the car. I said something like, yeah, okay, Karen. I went out to the car. You did? Put, you really? I put my mask on. I came back in, and I was like, you know, I told the guy, oh, look, I'm sorry about I'm that. Really sorry. I'm really sorry. And he was like, don't worry, don't worry. He goes, we're all frazzled over this. I go, I just, I shouldn't have said that, you know. But so Boy, I put I, it on and I came back I in. I think I, I heard about all this after the fact. Cause, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't think I heard it while you said something. And I don't but think I noticed that you didn't have it. People can't, you know, people can't keep this up much longer. I don't know what the answers are anymore. I just right. want this over with. I know. In you, the worst way. You don't want it to be the new normal. No. You know? But apparently in some Asian countries on the other side of the world, they do wear masks in, in the subways all the time. And stuff and you know people well now I, I really don't want to get cooties anymore and I, I'm frankly I don't want to get anybody's flu either so right. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna be wearing a mask on the flights no all but the I mean, they've been doing it for like 15 no I know years, right? I know they've been doing it on flights <laughs> I've, you, right. you've, you see that on flights yeah. that be, people from Asia will have right. the masks on during the whole flight right yeah, but uh, I think there's some new normals that we're all going to... I really don't think we should be shaking hands. Yeah, I think that's the grossest habit. Why can't we just, you know, do something else? Do something, do something else. Right. But that came back. I thought that would be, like... This is safe. This is safe, right?